Okay then, let's start. Uh, I'm David Eliu e, and, and I will present you a little bit an uh, introduction of React with TypeScript. As my, my, as my teammate said, uh, Albert, there is a trilogy and he explained how to work with APIs and I will explain a little bit how to develop a front-end app using this API. Uh, first of all, uh, the main purpose of this talk is to learn a little bit of how to create a web application using React and TypeScript. And as you know, um, lately, these years, since React was launched in 2013, all the web applications have changed a lot. And for this reason, maybe a lot of people need to change how the, the, the way that they are developing the web pages. There is not, not only React, you have uh, Vue and Angular 2, and the three of them are component-based that I will explain now. Okay then, this is the same repository that Albert, Allah, and me created um, during these days to explain you how it works all. And first of all, Let's uh, start with a little bit of theory about how it works and what's React, what's TypeScript. Okay, um, first of all, TypeScript, what's that? And TypeScript, it's a, an open source programming language that it's typed. It's completely different from JavaScript. You, you, when you compile TypeScript, it, mean, it converts like in JavaScript, but there's, there are some differences that, that, that you can that, uh, that you can appreciate here in this example. For example, you can, here's the example of JavaScript, and here's the example of TypeScript. It's the, uh, the same function, but there is a difference. That TypeScript, it's typed with different class, uh, with the different types of the values, and JavaScript is not. Okay, then why we need the TypeScript? Because for example, if we are developing a simple web application, but uh, uh, if we are developing a simple web application, um, we don't need a lot of uh, a lot of uh, maintenance, a lot of this stuff. But if there is a big web application, then we're gonna need maybe a lot of classes, a lot of attributes. And what happens if these attributes are not typed? The thing is that the, some, some things, maybe they stop working and you don't know why, there's always errors and there is the, the, that, that's the second reason to add TypeScript in our web pages. The, it's that when you compile TypeScript, it directly says that, okay, you have an error here, maybe this type is not the same type of this one, um, then you cannot compile the project and you will not have uh, the opportunity to run the project. And it's really, really important to do different um, front-end projects. So the second part of this presentation is React. Okay, a lot of people, I think that they are, they listened about React. And React is not a framework like Angular. It's a JavaScript library and it's component-based that it means that each part of the, of the, UI uh, interface for the user can be converted in a reusable in a, in a re reusable piece, and it can be re it can it can work by the on their own. For this reason, it's a really really important improvement. And then, what it have each component that uh, it have props and state. Uh, the props are the component input, like it says here, and the state it's the state of the of the of the component. For example, on this basic example, you can see in JavaScript or HTML, to develop a table, you're gonna use table, and then you're gonna fit each of the rows of this table to in in the in the HTML. But with React, you can convert all this table. Okay, we have a component that is the table, and it contains n rows components that they are rendered by their own. Um, for example, if we have the state, uh, I'm uh, using the same example as we used before in the, in the presentation before. If we have a table of contacts, for example, 
the table is going to contain all the information about the contacts. But when the, it renders each row, it's going to send the 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 props, the properties of each row to each component. It's going to be rendered like um, it's going to be rendered with the properties that the table sent. Then, if you if we want to modify each row or whatever, you can only have the state in the row component. You don't need anything more. Uh, then, for this reason, well, I'm going to explain a little bit more later. But then, what happens? Sometimes you want to, to execute some code after the rendering is done. For example, in the, in, we're going to see in the project, in the code. But what happens when the data is not in local? You need to call a service to retrieve the, all this data and then render all this data in your components. At first, when you start the web page, you don't have this data. But you can render. I'll, uh, you can also render whatever whatever you have. You have no data, but you can render whatever. Then, when there is two uh, methods that are native in React, that it's component did mount and component will mount. That, for example, component will uh, did mount will directly execute after the render is done. We're gonna see further in the code. And with this method, for example, we can call the API that Albert implemented and retrieve all this data. And then when we have all the data, we can update all the state of the component. With updating all the state of the component, we are saying to React that we want to re-render re the component at all. And when, when, then when we are sending, uh, when we are uh, fitting all this data in our web page, we're gonna render the wall the wall uh, the whole web page, web page again, and then there is another um, there is another function that is named component will mount. That this function is when when we want to, for example, we have a timer. Okay, uh, imagine that you have a web page that you have a timer. Okay, then you're gonna render the web page. Then you're gonna call component did mount, and then you're gonna start the timer. Right? Okay, but when we close the, this component timer, we want to reset the timer again. Then we can execute the code that, that we want after the component timer is already done. You can find more information here. I'm going to explain some libraries after the presentation, but let's start um, reviewing all the code. I normally use Visual Studio Code for web page development because it's really it's really a small application and it's there is not heavy it's not heavy and it works quite nice. Then for starting this, we're gonna go into the libraries that we have used to do this pro to, to to develop this project. First of all, we have all the all these types that the types are different commands or different um, yeah, different commands that you can use in React or web page development with Node.js and all this stuff. And then we have the libraries here. In this case, we have used Node.sas, that it's a library that you compile all the all the SAS files to CSS to uh, for all the styling and all this stuff. Then you have React and React DOM. React is the library that we're going to use for implement the web page, but we need the React DOM to attach all the all the components to the DOM of the web page. I don't know if you know what's the the DOM. The DOM is the it's named the document object model. It's the tree of objects that it's created after you after you uh, develop a web page with HTML. For example, uh, here no here for example. Here you have a DOM and you're gonna have a div, but after this div is gonna have two branches that is gonna be an H1, uh, a title, and a button. Then after this, all this hierarchy is gonna make a tree and it's gonna have all the objects that you want to, to see. Continuing further with uh, all the all the 
all the packages. React scripts are the it's a library that is used to run all the React projects. And then we have used um, another library that is named Toaster. Toaster, they are the little dialogues that are going in the left corner of the web page after you have done an application. For example, if you update a, a user or you delete a user from the from the web page, then you're gonna show the you're gonna you're gonna see here here up a message like okay you have deleted the user successfully or you have uh, you have uh, um, updated this user successfully or whatever you need then it's really useful for example to show the message that you have done um, you have done a you, when you interact with the web page or the API it's really important to the user for for the user to know that the change it's completely done and there is no problem with it for example you can use for, if we made a change but there is an error we can directly show this to us saying oh something is wrong and saying what error it has and finally we have the TypeScript library that is going to be used for compile all the TypeScript to JavaScript and whatever. Okay, then how it works React? React, at first of all, we have an index. Uh, all the um, React files with TypeScript are named TSX, are the, the extension of the files. And after this uh, with the with the with the index tsx you render directly the component that you want this that component is going to be the main component of our web page we post we put this component to the root part of the dom tree and after this we're gonna we're gonna create all the dom tree using only the uh the react components okay then let's start as we said we have done like an agenda, okay? You have some contacts, you can edit, delete, and add some contacts to your to your to your agenda. Then for at first we have done the component agenda container. In this component, we're gonna we're gonna have uh I wanna explain whatever it does. What I said about uh, before is that for example we have in each component we're gonna have the constructor. Then the render, after the render, we're gonna have the component in mount. And if we want to delete or update all the data that we, are, we have here, then we're gonna declare a component will on, on mount whenever we want to close this component to, uh, well, to whatever we want with the code or whatever. Okay, then this component, it have to, to create this component, you have your properties or your state, okay? We have defined it here. As I said before, for example, this component has no properties because it's the main container. Then there is not there is no input to this component. But for the state, we have some states here. Okay. First of all, we have the array of contacts that in the constructor we declare that I like an empty array because okay, I need to to attack the Albert's API, but I don't have the, the contacts right now. Then I start a completely empty array and then the panel and, and, and edit all this stuff I will explain later okay but they are for editing or adding no data adding new data or deleting data and and then after the the, the constructor we, we set the state of uh, the initial state of this construct uh, of the of this component and then we render the component on the render the component, first of all, we create a paper that it's a paper. It's like a, a it's a component that is given by, by a library that's named Material UI, okay, UI. And after, here in the component, we start rendering all the all the table. First of all, that we know that okay, one table have one header. Then we don't need to render um, whatever we want. We we need to render only this with the headers and then when we have the headers we start with the body of the table what happened here is with the body of the table we said before that we have a main component that it's a container in this case it's a table okay and then we have another component that it's agenda item okay these components 
are directly um, are you can render these components, components using the contacts that you have. And then, um, for example, you, we have the component agenda item that is a row of the of the table, but we don't need all. We need only to put this. We are gonna render n times the number of contacts we have with only using this component. For this reason, it's the, the it's component based because you are using components and you don't need all the time it's writing divs on all you want. Okay then, and finally we have two components more: agenda contact file that it's gonna render all the. Um, it's gonna render all the, um, when we want to edit or add a new user. We have the dialogue that we have here, all the, the world dialogue, that it's gonna, when we want to delete the user, it's gonna show a message that it's gonna say, are you sure you want to delete this user or whatever you want? One moment, Adrian Quattro. Okay, then, when we render a new co a component inside another component, for example, the agenda item, we're gonna render n times agenda item, we need to pass to, to, to put the parameters of this component. Agenda item, for example, we have that, yes, it has some properties. One property is the contact that we are gonna render. For example, we are iterating so through our array that is declared in the main component, okay? In the agenda container, and then we iterate, and we only pass one content each time that we want to render an, an item. Then, this, this, the properties of this item is going to be the contact, as I said, and then we have passed, uh, uh, we have two more parameters that they are two functions. These functions are sended like we are, they are declared in the main con in the agenda container component, but they are going to be used uh, after for um, edit or delete contacts. Then, for example, um, when we go in the agenda item, we declare at the end of the row, we declare two buttons, okay? One is the delete, one is the edit button, and then when we click whatever, um, whatever button of this, we go directly to this function. And this function, we directly call the, the, the property function that have been sent before. On this case, we need to bind this, for example, because on when we want to edit, uh, uh, how to explain this? Um, when we want to modify an item, but we, the, the service that we declare here at the constructor is not on the item, then we need to um, to call or that to say this to execute the function that is gonna make the, the items change or delete or whatever we want. On this case, for example, what we're gonna do when we want to add a new contact or edit a contact, we're gonna open a panel and then we're gonna pass the, we're gonna set the contact information to our to our state. And then we're gonna say that, for example, in this case, we're gonna put edit true because we are editing a contact or in this case it's gonna be an false because we are not editing we are adding a new a new a new contact going here returning to the agenda item um, the agenda item is gonna rent it have no state okay and as we can see here you can uh, as we said we can you can type all the all the classes, all the types that you want to use for for this. Then we're gonna render the user information. On this case, we're gonna use the the for example, we're gonna put here the image URL of the user of the contact. We're gonna put the name and surname. We're gonna use the uh, we're gonna fill the address, the telephone, the mail. And then and then at the end, we have the two buttons to interact with this item. But we're gonna interact calling or that functions that are uh, delete, that are on delete contact and on edit contact on this case. The button to add a new contact, it's here at the header that you have and you, when you click on add contact, you go directly here in the parent to 
and you update your state and then you can continue editing. Then when you have all well if if you have some questions mm, ask me and uh, don't be afraid and I will try to explain uh, as better as I can. Um, okay then we have all the structure we're gonna have a tree like we have one component that it's the main container agenda container and then we have another component that it's agenda item okay but there is a third component that we have developed that it's the agenda contact file the agenda contact file it's when we want to edit or add a new um, item we can directly we can directly um, create this item it's a panel okay it's a drawer and you're gonna see all the information that you have in the case that you want to edit a contact or you're gonna have an empty empty information in the case you want to add a new contact there was no time but the um, I wanted to add the option to view the to view the the, the contact information then you're gonna have a form but with no with um, with all the text fields all the inputs disabled because you don't need to 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 modify the information then on this example for example um, yeah and then when you have the two options on on the agenda contact file you have the show two options to add a contact or close the hour directly and it's doing exactly the same. You call your parent functions because you, you have the main component and you um, you have the main component and then you will need to call the service that it's in the it's in, it's in the parent in the parent container. I will explain after this because it's a little bit of chaos if you don't know uh, if you never learned uh, React, but there is a library that I will explain a little bit after all that its name Redux and Redux the, the main purpose of Redux is that you have um, a main state but it's not in the application you can map all uh, only the options that you want to the to your to your only the option or only the parameters or attributes that you want to map in each component then after all of this um, I think I'm not forgetting any fear. Ah, anything? Oh, yes. What I said. Um, we want to connect to the API. Then we don't we don't have the contacts at first. In the main component, when we create the main component, we start with the service. Okay, we create a new service that is calling this folder here. That its name. Uh, uh, we declare the interface of the service. Okay, that okay. We have the get contact. The get contacts, create contact, update contact, and delete contact. And then, as well, is is the advantage of having TypeScript that you can create interfaces and then relate for, to to this interface and create a class using this interface. Then here, before having the all the all the API um, um, working, I created some contacts, dummy contacts here. They are not needed anymore because they are completely um, connected to the API right now. The service is completely connected, but um, <clears throat> you will. And then you, for example, you can call directly the get contacts. You will um, you will retrieve all the data of the contacts and then we create the array and, res and we resolve the, the contact array plus a response. I don't know if you never work it with promises, but promises are used to to do asynchronous um, calls to different um, endpoints or functions. And then when you are done, you have the reject that it's a, it's an error that you can you have the reject, and then you have the 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 resolve with the contacts information. In this case, we have the same with the create contact. We have the same on the update contact and the same for the contact, delete contact. As Albert said before, as you can see, we can see all the endpoints, API contacts with the ADA uh, ID. You have the delete method. You have here the put method to update the contact. You have the create contact, create contact that you have directly contact and 
the post information, and then um, you have the get that the get that is directly the endpoint that Albert explained before. Okay, then maybe we can start with um, a little bit of uh, a demo. Okay. We start the project with the commands that are, are are posted in the readme file. Okay, we start here. I compile it before, then I don't need to, to run this command, but then if you run npm start, um, you will directly show this. Okay, you're gonna compile and, and show this. And then in my case, if you go to the local host port 3000, you're gonna find the information, but I normally use uh, with Visual Studio Code, I created a launch JSON that you directly can debug from the from the from the ID, and then you can use it to debug. Then, if we go here, we click to run, and here it goes. We have all this data with all the all the, this is the data that is in the database. Okay, and we are calling Albert's API. As you can see, we can delete, we can edit and add contacts. If we go here to add contact, for example, now it's trending topic in the worldwide, coronavirus, um, COVID-19, then worldwide, worldwide, whatever, and an email. For example, as you can see here in the in the edit contact or okay, it's but it's add contact. Here you have the the button to save. It's disabled. You can cancel, but it's this the, the the button here is disabled until all the parameters are not are not filled. Then if you if you for example start writing, but then you delete. If you don't fill all the if you don't fill all the all the information at less one character, there is an error that it's a requirement param a requirement value. Okay. Worldwide, whatever. Um, okay, and then when we save this object, okay, here we have the toast that new contact is created. And then if we go down to scroll, we have here the coronavirus and the address of the coronavirus, the telephone and the email. Then we can edit the information and say, okay, maybe a lot right now, there is a lot of in Italy. Then we save the information and directly we update this information. It's directly in the, in the database with the service. And then finally, we can delete this contact. It shows a message that, okay, are you sure you want to delete this contact? Um, and you say yes, and directly this contact is deleted. Then, um, um, for expl to explain all the components again, okay, we have the main component that it's the agenda, it's the table. And each row of this table is another component that it's named agenda item. And finally, we have this component that it's named the it's named the agenda file contact. Then with all of this, I want to explain to you. I cannot see here, I think. Okay, no, I need to change. I cannot debug this, but there is another tool that it's really interesting that it's named uh, that its name um, React Developer Tools. It's an extension for Chrome. Okay, here it goes. Um, <laughs> okay, this tool it adds you some different. Um, yeah, you you have the tree of components here, for example, and you can detect wh what components are these. For example. You have the agenda container, vale? Okay, that is the main component of the page. Then you have you're gonna have uh, the button here. The paper is the component that contains all all the stuff. And then here, if we go down the divider, here we have agenda item. We have 
and agenda items that is the, is the component that we have done. Um, and then at the end of the agenda item items, we have finally that agenda contact file. And uh, a good thing that you can see here is all the props, uh, all the properties and all the state that it has each time. For example, on this case, we have the agenda contact file. Okay, when we open it, I will maybe split like this. I think it's going to be better to show you. Okay, here we have the, the contact file and here the information, it's, it, there is nothing, okay, because we are adding a new user, okay, as you can see, contact, there is no information. And then, but we, if we go to edit contact, you can see that all the information has been filled here. Then, for example, there is no errors too, but if we go here to Albert and we delete all the all the data, there is nothing to update. There is there is an empty name. Then we're gonna have a an a, an error here, and with this error state, we show that the that red box that it's showing that there is an an error here. And then if we go here, um, then what more? If we go to an item, for example, agenda item, we can have all the information here too, all the props. There is no state, as I said before. And then if we go to the main component, we can see all the state here, the contact that we, are, we have updated. When we, are, when we are clicking here, we are sending the contact that we want to edit to our agenda container. And then this contact is gonna be be used to edit or whatever we want. And then we have all the array of contacts. For example, if we, I don't know if I can, no, I cannot do this. But at first, your, um, your, this list is completely empty and we will have all the data from, from the API from Albert. And this tool is really useful because sometimes when you are working with component-based components, um, you cannot use the, you, you, you have some errors and you have no explanation for these errors, but then if you know what's the, what's the, all the, all the cycle that it needs to follow to update your components, all the stuff, you can see the state and the properties of each component and see, oh, okay, maybe I forgot to pass this, comp to pass this property or whatever. And after this, what I said before, okay, um, I will explain you a little bit of Redux, okay? The, the main idea of Redux is, as I said before, is that um, we have no state. Well, you can have the state too to your components, but you have no state. Uh, you have a global state, and then you map the, the, you map the, the part of the state that you want to render in your component, and you are using the properties to do this. Okay, then you are sending the global state to say this, the store, uh, to the properties of the component because each time you modify state or properties of the component, the component will render again. And I think it's all, maybe a little, uh, I've been a little bit fast. Um, I don't know um, what more to say. For example, I don't know if you have questions or something. If not, maybe I can explain a little bit more thing, uh, a little bit more of things. Yeah, for example, yeah, uh, interesting thing. For example, here, the text value field, okay, that's an input, but it's from the library that I said before that it states its name material UI. Each time that you modify this value, you're gonna, you're gonna call this function, okay, on change. And on change function, it 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 um it checks for the okay. This value is empty or not empty. Is uh, is gonna be a error if this value is empty. And then you have another. And then you update the contact data that you are sending. Why that's interesting? Because if you are maintaining all the data all the time, the state of your component file uh, of the component is directly the data that you are filling in the form. Then you can you can I don't know how to say you can directly when we say okay on add contact we say directly the state 
we, send, we are sending directly the contact and we don't need to get the information from the input. You don't need anything more. You don't need only this. With this event target name, it's the name that I, that uh, the name of the of the input, and then the target value is the value that we have in the form right now. And yeah, I think it's all I have to say. Um, if someone have questions or something. Okay, if I get an API error, can I correct it with React? Um, yes, you, it depends because the, it depends the error that you have. Normally, if you um, have an error that it's sent from the API, it's like um, the, the API, you, for example, if you have updated something, you don't you, you cannot do anything more because if the API say that you have an error, it's that something that you have sent it or maybe the API is not working good, then you cannot do anything if you, if it's an update. And if it's a retrieved data, neither too, because normally the, the response of the API is like an there is an error, but you don't retrieve all the data, then I think that it's not possible. If the if you send an error, uh, for example, I don't know if I can force it to have an error here. Right now, it's completely done. I will show you again the here. Okay. <clears throat> if you have an error here in the, at the service, if we have an error directly, we we'll reject the error and here and for example, an agenda container. If we have. Um, on safe contact, uh, if we have an error here, when we reject, we're gonna go here in the error and we're gonna show this. We can put the error too in the in the toast to inform the user what error is, which error is, but for the moment it's not done. Any questions more? Exactly, you only reject it. Uh, okay, um, if there's no more questions, I'm sorry for my English. Um, right now, um, it's the first time that I have done a talk. Uh, and yeah, it's all. Um, happy hacking. And in one hour, what? Um, I think yes, all the video is gonna be in YouTube, I think, in the Hack UPC uh, video. Um, okay then, um, thank you for all, thank you for our attendance, and Ala is gonna, well, is gonna show you how to work with Docker in the next talk, okay? Bye.